We want the lemurs to be in our forest. We don't want them to be vanished from our forest. But we cannot do that alone. We need your help. Tonight, KPRC Channel 2 and the Houston Zoo take you on a journey to one of the most special places on Earth. More than 20 million people call this country home, but it's the animals they share the land with that make Madagascar so unique. A land once teeming with wildlife, now being destroyed. Remarkable animals in danger, but they're not the only ones struggling to survive. You cannot save species if you have starving people. That's why from here all the way to Houston, there's a massive effort to save Madagascar. Tonight, Rachel McNeil and her family explore the rainforest. Woo! Learn what's being done to care for the people. Bonjour, bon matin, doctor. And find out how Houstonians can save critically endangered species. If human is part of the problem, they must be part of the solution. KPRC Channel 2 and the Houston Zoo bring you this special presentation, Saving Madagascar. Welcome to the Houston Zoo. I'm Owen Conflenti. This may be an easy weekend destination for your family, but every time you come here, you're helping save animals all over the world. In 2015, KPRC took you on a journey to Rwanda to show you how the money you spend at the zoo is being used to support the gorilla doctors in their work to keep the great apes from going extinct. That's just one of many ways you and the Houston Zoo are supporting conservation efforts around the globe. Tonight, we take you to an island off of Africa, one with the most rare, the most unique, and some of the most critically endangered animals anywhere. In Madagascar, saving animals starts with saving the people who live there. My colleague Rachel McNeil traveled to the island with her family to see firsthand the progress being made, the dangers that still exist, and how Houston is helping save Madagascar. Madagascar, home to 22 million people, along with animals, insects, and plants not found anywhere else. All of it at risk of being wiped out. Rainforests are being destroyed, wildlife killed, and people left to try to survive with little support. It's a dire situation. All of the majesty of Madagascar at risk of vanishing. On the horizon, though, lies a glimmer of hope. A chance to replenish, revitalize, and save this incredible island before it's too late. That's where this journey is leading us. But first, we go back to how it began. My husband and I, along with our two young sons, packed to go on the adventure of a lifetime. This nearly 10,000 mile journey that took us over three continents and two oceans was more than an exotic vacation. For my family, KPRC photojournalist Alan Reed, and members of the Houston Zoo team, this trip would change our lives and hopefully inspire others to make changes that will save Madagascar. <laughs> After nearly 24 hours of traveling, we landed in the hub of the country. We've arrived in Antananarivo, the capital city of Madagascar, a place bustling with activity and traffic. It's where government business is done and decisions are made that impact the survival of wildlife in other parts of the island. Unfortunately, too often amid the cars, construction and commerce here, the green government leaders see is not the rainforest, but the money that can be made by allowing industry to spread across the island. We have to stop them. And how can you do that? We have to work with the local community. Understanding the challenges, we set out, ready to learn, explore, and find out just how Houston is playing a pivotal role in bringing Madagascar back from the brink of extinction. We found this huge endeavor to be largely in the hands of one man, Meet Jonah Ratsim Mombasafi. This is his passion, his life's mission, and his home. Hi. Hello. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Jonah and the village of Maramaza warmly greeted us as we arrived in our first stop outside the big city. Today we are greeting our collaborators. Hi, my name is Rachel McNeil. I'm from a news station back in Houston, Texas. This is my husband, Dr. Wayne Franklin, and my sons, Lionel, eight years old, and Hudson, who is five. Hudson, can you say hello? Hello. We're very happy to tell the story of Madagascar. You're a beautiful people from a beautiful country, and it is our honor to be here. Thank you. 
On this day, a celebration of collaboration between this village, Jonas Conservation Group, and the Houston Zoo. We have 450 staff back in on the other side of the world in Houston that are so proud of you and so grateful for what you're doing. There was music and dancing and gifts of rain jackets and backpacks for the children provided by the Houston Zoo. The pink ones go to the girls. And Lionel, you want to get some more for the boys? Black ones for the boys? Here you go, buddy. Here, buddy. Here, buddy. That's for you. A warm welcome for my family. Super cheese. <laughs> the face. Smiling is universal, huh? The spirit of the Malagasy people on full display, but unfortunately, a looming threat remains. The only place you'll find lemurs living in the wild may not be here for long. Our second day in Madagascar brought us into the rainforest Finally. for our first encounter with what draws tourists and money to the island. Get there, uh, we have to climb, we have to hike. We set off. Try to grab the rope again, Hudson, if you can. Get the rope, see? <laughs> there you go. Okay, buddy. Hold on, go for the knot. It's like you gotta earn this one, Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jeez. Final's on his own up there. As usual. We climbed up. Getting down's gonna be awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, where's the elevator? <laughs> you okay, Wayne? Yeah. And carefully down. Look at mommy, look at mommy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We walked and walked. We are hiking. No, there's no rocks. It still counts. It still counts. Oh. <laughs> it still counts, buddy. Yes. I'm still moving. All right. And following our well-trained guides, we walked some more. Spotting chameleons, bizarre bugs like the giraffe weevil. They're just staying there. Even a boa constrictor. Then finally, after walking for what seems like hours, we finally made it. We spotted a family of five plus a baby lemur. Look. A little farther in our trek, we spotted one of the most remarkable species on this island. I can see the injury right now. And it's black and white. It's really amazing for me to see it right there. The injury, the largest living lemur species, lives in small family groups. They survive on leaves and soil only found in these rainforests. Its distinctive call can be heard more than a mile away. The injury has different calls that they bark very loud. A lot of folks don't realize they can only live and thrive here. Right. Madagascar is it. Right. So this is the only place on earth that these animals can live. And when they um, first started here, when they broke off a piece of land and ended up sailing over to Madagascar, they did make it theirs and they adapted to this area. Its diet is so specialized. The, the plants that are here, you can't replicate in other places. Right in first, the thing is, is a sad forest. If they are still there, we still have the hope the people can survive. When you think of the possibility that that call could be no more, it, it is a real possibility. Yes, but as Jonah says on his watch, he will not see a lemur go extinct. You see it in the way that he is and the way he breathes. This is very important to him as is important it is to us that love the lemurs. He's going to make sure that this will not ever be the case. Saving the rainforest from destruction in Madagascar begins with saving the people. Conservation is always difficult when people get little access to health care. Next, the struggle to care for patients young and old. Right, he's three years old, Lionel. He's the size of a, a one-year-old. Then later, Whoa. Lemur Island, a place where rescued lemurs get a second chance. But first, made in Madagascar. Here in Madagascar, you won't see typical African predators like cheetahs or lions. Instead, the biggest predator here is more the size of a family dog. It is rarely seen, but very lethal to these animals. It's called the fusa. 50% of the fusa's diet is lemurs. And while spotting one in the wild is difficult, you can see them right here at the Houston Zoo. 
Afusa has a tail nearly as long as the rest of its body and really sharp teeth. These guys are considered an apex predator, which to me means nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to have Fusa for breakfast. The Fusa is threatened and another species at risk of vanishing if more is not done to save Madagascar. Amid the beauty of the landscape and the serene sounds of the animals here, an epidemic lurks on this island. It's not only dangerous, it's often deadly. A lack of reliable medical care is killing people, young and old. Good morning. Hi, hi. Bonjour. Bon matin, doctor. On this day of our journey, Wayne was invited to tour a clinic in a Malagasy village. As Chief of Cardiology for Texas Children's Hospital Pavilion for Women and Baylor College of Medicine cardiologist, Wayne is surrounded by a top-of-the-line medical team and state-of-the-art technology. In Madagascar, a clean bed is often hard to come by. They don't have mattress. No mattress. No mattress. Just the bed. Yeah. Oh, it's hard. Yeah. This is very hard. Doctors and nurses work hard, but there's only so much you can do with a limited supply of antibiotics, equipment, and staff. How many doctors do you work with? One. One. Just you and another, yes. another doctor. And then how many nurses? Yes. Uh, two. Two nurses. Two nurses. So two doctors, two nurses. That's it. For the whole village. That means you're on call a lot. In Andazi Bay, there are 12,000 people. That's one doctor for every 6,000 people. Yeah, yeah. And no ambulance. Yeah, and no ambulance. Yeah, that's, we we'll say, very underserved. But this village is lucky. It's just 19 miles from a bigger city and bigger hospital in Moramanga. Getting there quickly isn't easy, but it is possible, unlike many other villages, which are farther and less accessible. Oh, he's been sick for one, uh, one, yeah. one whole year he's been sick. Yes. He just came to the doctor yesterday. Exactly. So it's really hard to get access to health care. Yeah. Stomach is very big. So he had a bowel obstruction and needed IV fluid yes. to help him. And he, he did have a, a bowel movement yesterday. That's important. That's good. So he's feeling better. What do we have here? So we think it's an ulcer, not an infection. Mm -hmm. We know, at least in the US, sometimes ulcers are caused by infection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and so yeah, we sometimes can treat them. So you have basic medicines here. You have IV fluid, some antibiotics. Do you have blood here? Whole blood? For hemorrhage. That's they go to the other Moromanga. So what do we have? So we have measles. Measles vaccine, yes, okay. Yes, yes. BCG, so this is the yeah. tuberculosis Tubercular. polio vaccine here. Injection, so it's still good, November 4th, 2018. Solar energy helps charge up batteries so vital vaccines aren't lost if the power goes out. Yeah. That refrigerator with all the important vaccines yeah. will be powered by these batteries. Yes. That's very smart, very yeah. important. Unfortunately, the other fridge in this clinic doesn't function, and that's the one that also has a freezer. Yeah, it's I don't know. Expensive it's expensive to fix. To fix. Yeah. Uh. Cost restricts the care doctors can provide. In the United States, extensive testing is done to make a diagnosis in critical cases. Here, doctors must recognize problems by reviewing symptoms only. What are the top medical problems in, in the country of Madagascar? Yes, the diarrhea is one of the main problems, yeah, diarrhea. Because uh, we have lack of uh, uh, clean water to drink. According to UNICEF, only about 50% of households have access to clean drinking water. Only 3% have latrines. That increases the risk of diarrheal diseases. Another common problem, breathing issues like asthma and emphysema. You mentioned that a lot of that is caused by people living in small huts or houses and then burning wood and having fires and then they inhale the smoke inside their house. Because of the poverty, they have only one room. So they, they cook, they eat, they sleep in the one room. Doctors here forced to use the little they have to care for patients of all ages. Beginning at the maternity hospital next to the clinic, but you actually deliver the babies too. Yes. So you take care of the mom and the babies. Yeah. Yeah, the birth rate is pretty high in Madagascar. 
in the countryside, the female it is, they can't have 10 babies. One woman has 10 One babies. Woman has 10 mm. babies. That's a lot of children. You probably delivered that yeah, little guy, right? No, the nurse. Oh, the yeah. nurse did. The nurse delivered, yeah. Good yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. A healthy baby and mom for this family, but maternal mortality is high here, and nearly 120 out of every 1,000 Malagasy children die before their fifth birthday because of preventable diseases. That's the way you can help improve the health care and the lives of people is to have healthy moms delivering healthy babies mm -hmm. and give them a, a good start in life, right? Yeah. yeah, that's very important. At the clinic, everyday ailments are treated. Patients line up to be checked and are given prescriptions when available. Sometimes it's not enough. People need advanced care and it's just not available. Let me just take a listen. Right, he's three years old, Lionel. He's the size of a, a one-year-old. So you can tell he's very undernourished and weak, huh? So he does not walk yet? No. Not yet. This concerned mother has a healthy 10-year-old daughter. She's worried for her son. See, his heart is beating okay. Using a small portable ultrasound machine, Wayne looked at the boy's heart. Sometimes the, the babies don't like this because it's pushing on their belly, you know. But you have to make sure that it's connected normally and the blood vessels enter the heart normally, which it looks like they do here. He's three years old. He can't sit up yet. He's supposed to, he should be able to support himself. He's very weak, right? He can't walk. He can't talk. He's malnourished. 48% Malagasy children are chronically malnourished. In this case, the boy is able to eat, but he's still not thriving. But you worry about something, you know, metabolically, you know, uh, <clears throat> whether he's not, he's not processing food or proteins very well with his nutrition. I'm thinking he has a neurologic problem because he should be growing. He should be speaking. Fortunately, it's, it looks like his heart and lungs are okay. How you doing? Okay, bonjour. Bonjour. Wayne did a basic heart check on people across generations. Lana, you want to see? So that's the left side of his heart there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the heart looks strong, beating well. Mm -hmm. Valve, the mitral valve is not leaking well. That's good. The World Health Organization says the life expectancy in Madagascar for men is 64, women 67. In the U.S., life expectancy is 13 and 15 years longer. This patient has lived three decades longer than the average Malagasy woman. Being 97 years old, there's no way she smokes. She wouldn't be this old if she smoked, <laughs> right? She drinks. Oh, that's probably okay. On the verge of living a century, this grandmother's heart showed the signs of her age. See that? That's her aortic valve. It's very bright. Brightness is usually calcium on her wow, heart like there, see? Yeah. Okay. And uh, that was what was causing the murmur. Yes. She has both narrowing, and see this leaky? Mm -hmm. Out and back, that, le that leakiness right there? So yes. she has what's yes. called aortic valve insufficiency, yes. right, mild, right there? Yes. Maybe moderate right there. Yes. See how thick her heart muscle is? So that's from high blood pressure. In spite of the advanced age, this senior in Andazi Bay is doing well. She had nine children and a lot of grandchildren. Forty. <laughs> forty. <laughs> just, for, just make sure I got that right. That's four zero. <laughs> so a lot of grandchildren. So they have good genes because she's a healthy lady. Pretty good. <laughs> The goal is to extend the lives and improve the well-being of all Malagasy people. And that means getting help from abroad, the United Nations, UNICEF, and the U.S. What do they bring you, Jonah? So they, give, they provide trainings to the nurses. Training to the nurses? Yeah. And then they also provide training to the community here on the basic health. While aid is coming in, sometimes conservation efforts are met by resistance at home. His life has literally been threatened for what he's trying to do. Still ahead, the dangers of trying to save species and the rewards. They are a special creature. This is just an experience that you just, it, you can't match it. Oh my gosh. Then later, close encounters with some of the lemurs that play a critical role in regrowing their own habitat. 
That is the species I love the most. We need the black and white femurs to be in this forest to spread the seeds. But first, made in Madagascar. Did you know two thirds of the world's chameleons are in Madagascar? In an array of colors. He looks like he's been painted, doesn't he? Sizes and shapes. It feels like a leaf. These reptiles have adapted to hide and defend themselves. And with eyes that can move in different directions and a tongue that can extend as long as its body, the panther chameleon, like this one at the Houston Zoo, easily snatch up insects in a fraction of a second. Stay with us for more Saving Madagascar next on KPRC Channel 2. By all accounts, it seems Jonah Rats and Mabasafi was born to save the lemurs. As a child, our parents brought us to the zoo in Tananarivu. And we, we went to the zoo and we saw the lemurs. It's only when I was a student at the university that I realized that Madagascar is the only country where you can have the lemurs in their natural habitat. He studied paleontology and went on research trips in search of fossils. We passed through the forest and uh, we saw lemur hunted, traps, snares. And uh, I said, okay, as a paleontologist, I know the fossils can wait. I have to save the living lemurs before it is too late. I would say I feel responsible. Jonah has gone from being the student to a teacher. Okay. He now teaches at a university and is one of the original founders of the primate study and research group known as JEREP. We are blessed that this is a promised land. 17 lemurs have already extinct, and now we have 113. More than 90% of them are on the brink of extinction. We don't let them to vanish from our forest. That is our goal. Lemurs have become wildly popular thanks to the animated Madagascar movies. But here in real life, the big picture for lemurs and the other native wildlife is bleak. One of the problems that we are facing to is uh, people from the outside come to Marmiza to cut trees and then to, as uh, the, the timber exploitant, illegal timber exploitant. So we have to stop that. 80% of the island's forests are already gone. Jonah fears the rest could be destroyed within the next 25 years. From this vantage point high above the island, you really get a good perspective of the areas devastated by deforestation and those protected by conservation. Realizing the wildlife he studied his whole life might no longer exist, Jonah looked for help to save it. If human is part of the problem, they must be part of the solution. The solution, he found, started in the villages. We are convinced that the community, the people are the last chance to save the unique biodiversity of Madagascar. Jonah and his team have helped villagers learn the forest and the animals in it mean income. When people are poor, it is very, very difficult to set the lemurs. So we want them to understand that the lemurs are there to improve their livelihood. Now locals work as guides for tourists and they watch for activity endangering the forest. They work for us. If I see infraction within the forest, they report and they told us. But the battle between nature and industry rages on here. Sometimes they're helpless to stop it. Other times the fight pays off. This bat cave was once targeted by people who wanted to destroy it in order to make roads, but now it's another incredible example of the efforts being made here to preserve nature's beauty. And there was a the time that the, they want to destroy these, um, these yeah. big rocks oh. uh, to build to the, 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 the road, but we have to fight on the media. If they did that, the bats are gone. Oh, okay. So we try to stop them and they, we, could, we could stop them. But that is something that you have to face every time. Some people want to take abuse to use the rock, this, uh, this granite and the rocks to, for something else. But this is a protected area. This is more So you're able to protect it? Yes. And you got support? Yeah. While Jonah has found support, not everyone in the country is behind him. Jonah has had his life threatened um, when he has tried to stop um, illegal wood trade at the airport, he's come in and sort of said this isn't right. Um, because there is corruption in the country, then he was told that he should watch his back by the government. 
Um, there is a lot of different things that he is threatened by, but that doesn't stop him because he knows this is right. He knows that the government will benefit from having the forest. They just don't see the bigger picture. And so he risks his life to make sure that these animals are protected. Renee Bumpus is the Senior Director of Wildlife Conservation Programs for the Houston Zoo. She knew immediately that Jonah and his group Jarop would be good partners at saving wildlife. Because his program is run by local people and that he is a local person, that makes it far more impactful and far more progressive. He understands everything of the needs of the people much more than a foreigner coming in. Other 70% of the, our staff are supported by Houston Zoo. You see that Houston logo everywhere. It's amazing considering this partnership began just six years ago. It is. It is incredible, the growth, and it's very fast. And again, JERP is very effective. They're seeing movement. They're seeing this uh, sense of protection for that forest because people see the value. They now celebrate their progress and the lemurs that have changed their lives. They hold festivals complete with costumes and crowds mimicking the animals. Jerp brings that lemur festival to be able to give to the people a positive way they can see wildlife. So this joy is brought to you because wildlife is here. And I think that comes out in the festival with them dancing, jumping, having this great time. A great time as hope for the future of Madagascar's forests grows. That is a huge, exciting element to this project. Still ahead, restoring the forest while teaching people how to create new sources of food. And next, oh, oh, man. Okay. up close and personal with the lemurs of Lemur Island. But first, made in Madagascar. Habitat destruction, along with hunting for its meat and eggs, has made the Madagascar big-headed turtle one of the most endangered turtles in the world. Females only lay eggs every other year, so efforts to teach Malagasy fishermen how to protect them, as well as breeding programs like ones at the Houston Zoo, may be the only hope for saving this unique Madagascar species. We'll have more on the island's incredible wildlife when Saving Madagascar continues. Extensive logging has caused widespread erosion in Madagascar, so much that astronauts have said that from space, it appears the country is bleeding into the ocean. The forest is disappearing, and along with it, the habitat for animals of all sizes, including this Madagascar hissing cockroach. Even if you're not a fan, these cockroaches play a critical role in keeping the soil and the plants healthy. And millipedes like this one in Madagascar also help by eating decaying leaves and plant matter. It takes a lot of different types of wildlife to keep an ecosystem healthy. But in Madagascar, the heart of that system is the lemur. And in spite of threats against the animals on the island, there is one place where rescued lemurs are getting a second chance. Poachers and trappers remain a constant threat to Madagascar's unique animal population. Chameleons, snakes, tortoises, and turtles are collected and sold in an international pet trade. Lemurs are captured and many are killed there's one place where rescued lemurs thrive. And on this day of our journey, we traveled by canoe to that tiny reserve near Andazi Bay National Park. You ever imagine we'd be on a canoe? <laughs> My husband Wayne was the captain of our canoe. I just thought it couldn't get more Indiana Jones. <laughs> canoe with, with one oar. <laughs> and whether he liked it or not. Go left, Wayne. He had a team of coaches on board. Wayne, we're about to go straight to a stick. Go get distracted, just keep that away. All right, Wayne, I think we're about to crash. Coming in hard, sorry. I feel like we should have gotten a professional rower instead of daddy. What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> Wayne steered the canoe as we toured Lemur Island. The lemurs are just on the side there. A place that attracts tourists and their money. The lemurs here have been released into this protected area and appear quite comfortable with their frequent visitors. And then, let them eat a banana. They readily come close for pictures and not surprisingly, food. Okay, Mr. Lemur. They like the food, guys, yeah. apparently. Hi, buddy. 
Hudson, my kindergartner, was curious, but timid around the animals. <laughs> Lionel, my third grader, was a bit more bold. Hey, okay. yeah. Yeah. Wow, this is cool. Do yeah. <laughs> you want to try it, Hudson? No. no. <laughs> Hudson, it feels so good. It's like a no. pillow. While I was here on this amazing place for work, my job as a mom kept me busy too. Don't pet him, but you can go near him. Lionel, don't put your hands out unless you have food. I just want to see them fight. No. Yeah. We're not here to see them fight. Is it peeing on me? Okay, what is that? It's not all relaxing. Lionel, relax. Nobody gets to do this on Earth. This is unlike anything else in the world. A variety of lemurs live on Lemur Island and give visitors a unique experience. Woo! All right. <laughs> These close encounters also make for a memorable way to learn about lemurs. Um, mongoose lemur, lesser mongoose lemur, and they have um, much smaller mouths, as you can see, than the other lemurs we were interacting with. They're a much smaller species. Very timid. This is why they are hiding over here and not jumping on everybody. And these guys do breed in captivity well. There's captive populations of these guys, so if ever there's a need for them in the wild again, they will be able to, zoos will be able to help with reintroducing them. They're a very cool little species. And as you can see, their fur is very fine. They're very soft. Look at the one above. As opposed to this one, which is a much larger species of lemur, and you can see their specialty of the, the, um, their opposable uh, ankles there. Oh, you want the whole thing, I see. And they're a little bit more brave. These are also the species that defecate out seeds and replant the forest. They're very good at repopulating or regrowing the forest. Unlike other primates, lemurs can't grip with their tails. They're proficient in using their hands and feet to get around the trees. You want me to do it? Watch this, watch this, Hudzi. Watch this. Watch this, Hudzi. Yeah, oh, oh, he likes it. Hold still, hold still. This, now I want to do it to that one. Oh, the little baby guy. That one and the that one and the that one and the that one. So all day. As Hudson warmed up to the lemurs, I began to feel my inner wildlife explorer come out too. We're now off to the next lemur island where we'll see the ring tailed lemurs. Come on. Oh, did you hear my stomach growl on that yeah. one, Alan? Our eating and sleeping schedules may have been off, but seeing ring-tailed lemurs like we have at the Houston Zoo quickly took our minds off of it. The species lives 16 to 18 years in the wild, longer in zoos, and they spend more time on the ground than other varieties of lemur, foraging for fruit and other food. Ring-tailed lemurs mark their territory with powerful scent glands, something that made our photographer a little uneasy. He's not going to mark scent me, is he? Oh, he might, Alan. Oh, I'm just afraid he's going to scent me. Alan, don't worry about it. I don't think it's like a skunk scent. The scent glands are on the wrists and near the armpits of these distinct lemurs. They cover their tails with the odor and wave them in the air as a way of communicating and showing dominance. Alan, describe to me the emotions you're feeling. I don't know what to think. Just, <laughs> just don't scent my camera. <laughs> we return to our canoe, unscented, to see if we could find any other species. Look, we're going through a tunnel! And we did. The shivak is known for how it dances across land. With powerful legs that help it leap, shivaks can jump more than 30 feet from tree to tree. They live in larger family groups than other lemurs. At times, a group will have more than a dozen members. And as we witness, they are territorial. I tried to get my family together for a picture before our time on Lemur Island was through. It's not going to come on you. Hudson, stand next to me for the picture. Hudson, Please, Hudson. We need it for a picture. Yeah, Hudson, I see your hand up. Don't put your hands up. Here, yeah. just stand right here in the middle. Yeah. Hudson, watch out. That's good, guys. Lionel, look at me. Hudson, look at this. Pretty good. Whoa. Okay. The lemurs did a better job posing for the camera than my kids. You did a good job. Finally, we returned to the dock. Can I get a little help from the shore guy? <laughs> Hard right? Whoa. Okay, watch your fingers. Stick down. Stick cannot go in the car. Oh, let go. Woo, man. You cannot save species if you have starving people or people that are unhealthy. They need to be taking care of themselves before they can take care of anything else. Still ahead. 
how the people of Madagascar are saving the forest. Everything is useful. And themselves, then later. You have species that are not found anywhere else in the world. How you can make a difference for these incredible animals right here in Houston. But first, made in Madagascar. Tenrex. There are 30 species of tenrex in Madagascar, and their diet consists primarily of insects. They're rooting around for termites, that's what they love. The lesser hedgehog tenrex is one of the few species of tenrex you'll find in zoos. Tenrex have evolved and survived over millions of years, and even they are now threatened or endangered. We'll be back with more Saving Madagascar next. Madagascar is one of the poorest countries on the planet. People survive in villages like this one with little of the comforts that we have back in the States. And while many of the villagers used to hunt lemurs for food, they now realize the value in the animals isn't in their meat, but in the money that's brought in when tourists come here to see them. They need to be taking care of themselves before they can take care of anything else. When the situation for Madagascar's wildlife became dire, the task of saving the animals, particularly the lemurs, was daunting. To them, they were living, you know, and subsiding and feeding their children. They had no other sense of how to get food. Uh, where the water is Jonah has made it his life's mission to save the lemurs, the trees, and the Malagasy people. Jonah did not come in and tell them they were doing the wrong things. They said, he said, let's improve your way of being and let me show you how the forest will do that. They're now doing it by replenishing the forest and creating new sources of food. That is a huge, exciting element to this project. Um, that ability to grow the seeds of uh, some of these trees that are in the forest that are critical, uh, lemur homes and food sources. All of them are native trees. Now we have uh, 4,000 uh, uh, plants here now. This we have to restore as fast as possible. It's a forest and animals that people who've experienced it say must be saved. They're starting to see greater and greater value in the ecosystem of the, of the whole forest. So not killing any of the animals in the forest, really, and looking at fish farming, agriculture, um, and honey, and all of these different sources as their way of, of sustaining their families. We have trained about uh, 50, people to, to make campus here. Tank, Zibu tank. That's not a matter. And we, uh, we, we put it, it down um, with, uh, with a soil, mm. with a rich soil. Okay. We do not uh, use uh, chemical pesticides, but use biological pesticides to grow up these uh, carrots. It's not just carrots nourishing this community. You can see apple, litchi, um, no, peach. Produce is flourishing because of the careful attention they pay to the soil. We raise uh, baby worms in a compost uh, right, right behind and we, we wet it every day. From the earth to the water. We raise worms in order to feed the, the fishes. Healthy worms are a critical component of keeping the food supply flowing. We are following Jerb's technique and in order to make it living, we'll do our best and to conserve the environment too. How to know uh, the fishes are hungry? It's simple. They get closer to the surface of water. That may be simple, but the process it took to create this system and to maintain it are not. We made a great effort during uh, one year to dig uh, those seven pools that you can see around. We also uh, cultivate rice and cassava to, to feed uh, the fishes. So now they are uh, uh, catching the fish, the, the parents, in order to take the eggs. They carefully track the fish and the flow of water between the pools to promote breeding. Another way this community is hoping to make money, honey. It's a valuable commodity in this region, but there have been setbacks. We started it like uh, five, six years ago, and but there, is, there was a problem. There was a uh, uh, bee's disease, and all of the bees in the region, not only in Marmiza, died. They didn't give up. Really, we are very successful yeah. for beekeeping right now. We are going to produce more at uh, 2017. 
maybe about one or two ton of, uh, of honey, so we can export. Uh. They work to sell the bees, the honey. Everything is useful. And the byproducts. We use these, uh, the white stuff mm -hmm. to, to clean the house. Nothing is wasted. It's conservation that's changing how this country lives, eats, and thrives. Still ahead. I think educating future generations is going to be critical for the future of our planet, not just Madagascar. How you and your children can help the Houston Zoo save wildlife all over the world. With us, we're trying to create a family. We really want to show that support by embracing the people that are protecting them in the wild. But first, made in Madagascar. There he goes. The tomato frog is one of the many amphibians on the island, and it's also one you can see at the Houston Zoo. The tomato frog when it's big, it's big like that. It's really like a tomato. Tomato frogs use an ambush strategy to hunt, sitting in one spot and eating whatever insect is unlucky enough to pass by. Mining for minerals like ilmenite, which makes things like paint, paper, and toothpaste white, is one of the biggest threats against the frog's habitat. We'll have more on how you can help animals from the frogs to the lemurs when Saving Madagascar continues. think about it when you're spending a Saturday afternoon at the Houston Zoo, but just by passing through these front gates, you're playing an important role in saving the animals here from going extinct. So tell me where we are and why this place is so special to you. So now we are here at Park Simbozaza in the center of Antananarivo. Jonah was inspired to save wildlife by his first visit to a zoo as a child. So this place I will never forget because my love of the lemurs, I got that from here by seeing them. Just like Jonah found his calling, the goal of the Houston Zoo is to inspire the next generation of conservationists. We want people that come to the zoo to understand that they're saving animals when they come to the zoo. Whether you're a zoo member or just visit on occasion, you're helping fund projects all over the world, including Jarrett. We have 2.5 million people that come through our gates, and those people can be so proud watching this. The more we bring in, the more people we bring in, the more medical support we can give, the more uh, support for the forest to ensure this protection, to ensure these lemurs won't go extinct. <laughs> In 2016 alone, the Houston Zoo's support allowed students in five villages to learn about the lemurs. It replenished about 10 football fields worth of forest, and it trained nearly 30 new fish farmers and beekeepers. This partnership is really unique to any other zoo. Right. Nobody's doing this. Right. And what we try to do is, as I say, make them part of our family. So the partners at JERP are now are um, part of the Houston Zoo. Anything that they would need to keep this conservation effort going is what we're going to offer them. The zoo helps Jarup tell the story of Madagascar to a worldwide audience. This is something that people can be so proud of. Houstonians, look, your name is on buildings. Your name is on that medical clinic. Your name is on that nursery that's growing those forests. Your presence is here. <laughs> that's so exciting. Your presence through the Houston Zoo is in Madagascar, saving lemurs. It's also in Rwanda, saving gorillas, in Borneo, saving elephants, and in the Galapagos Islands, saving tortoises. All around the globe, conservation efforts to save animals are benefiting from funding and support from the Houston Zoo. Even in Texas, wildlife is being brought back from the brink of extinction. In 2016, the Houston Zoo released 775,000 Houston toad eggs into the wild. It's estimated there were less than 300 Houston toads left, and the critically endangered local species would vanish without help. The Atwater's prairie chicken population nearly doubled when the zoo released 90 birds last year. The zoo gathers eggs from birds housed at a site near Johnson Space Center. The eggs are then moved to the zoo where they're kept warm and safe until they hatch. Just like the Houston toad and the Atwater's prairie chicken, lemurs and other endangered animal populations could be restored thanks to carefully managed breeding programs in zoos across the United States. So this is a really exciting time to be doing conservation work in Madagascar. 
Amy Dunham is an assistant professor at Rice University and has been involved in a number of research projects on the island. The first time I went down there was 1994. There has been some progress. There's and there's, I think there's reason to have hope. She's studied the dangers that exist there and the progress being made, and she's worked closely with the zoo and Jerup. The Houston Zoo is doing really important work by helping to fund projects like Jonah's. Dunham says a healthy Madagascar helps create a healthy planet. Madagascar is a, is a major reservoir of global biodiversity. It's a hotspot that holds 10% of the world's tree species. While illegal deforestation kills lemurs, Rice University researchers are digging into how the loss of the lemur in turn impacts the forest. When we lose these lemurs, we're not just losing lemurs, we're also losing tree species, which are really important for carbon storage. Without as many lemurs to spread seeds around, the efforts of villagers to regrow the forest are even more critical. And consumers can help too. Rosewood from Madagascar is popular for furniture and instruments, but it's illegally brought into the U.S. If you can stop that, that trade, then you will protect these forests. So not buying wood that's made from rosewood, anything that's made from rosewood is really the key that they can do at home. Of course, changes that can make an impact on conservation begin with education. And that's what the Houston Zoo focuses on locally every day. You enjoy the lemur at the zoo, you're giving to lemurs in the wild. That's a huge concept. Come and see it and save it. That's amazing. My family saw firsthand how amazing Madagascar is, and my sons couldn't wait to share their experience with their friends back home. This is about my trip in Madagascar. Lionel shared pictures and stories with his third grade class. And sometimes they like to kind of dance. And then this one had like a baby here. Okay, look at me and lie, you know. And he told them about Jonah. He's trying to protect this one big forest with lots of lemurs. The challenges he faces and his message. We have to protect them because they're very endangered there. Jonah wants more people to know about his home. We do hard work here, but we want the world to know what are we going to do, what are we doing here because we want to share our experiences. An experience you can be a part of, whether you travel to this exotic land or simply learn about its animals at the zoo. You're saving forests, animals, and people. Me, myself, I cannot reward that. God rewards you, and you have saved many people's lives. As we've shown you in the last hour, a lot is being done to save wildlife, but the work is just beginning. And there are things you can do at home to help, like recycling or putting in a garden full of native plants and flowers. You can also get involved in projects with the Houston Zoo, like beach cleanups and events to replant Texas forests. And of course, the easiest thing you can do is just visit the zoo. To learn more about all the Houston Zoo's global conservation projects that benefit from your time here, look for a link on the community page of click2houston.com. Thank you for joining us for our special presentation, Saving Madagascar. From all of us here at KPRC Channel 2 and the Houston Zoo, have a great night.